For the past few years, the open source scan converter has been the highest quality retro gaming scaler available, offering three inputs and scaling up to 1080p with zero lag. Using the OSSC can be a bit confusing though, so I wanted to go over its basic use, as well as some slightly more advanced stuff like updating the firmware and dialing in optimal timings. The OSSC is an awesome scaler, and many people will use it without really changing any settings at all. If you don't enjoy tinkering with settings and just want to get your classic consoles on a flat panel TV, the OSSC ships from the factory with a generic mode programmed that looks great as is. Simply connect your console to the SCART, component, or VGA inputs, power everything on, and then hit the first button on the OSSC to select inputs. If you're just looking to get started, that's it. Even if you hate messing with settings though, there's a few simple ones I think you should know. First, use the remote to enter the menu and select output options. This allows you to set resolution and depending on your display, this might be the only setting you'd have to change as some TVs and monitors aren't compatible with all modes. My favorite settings for 240p gaming are either 3x, which is 720p, or 5x, which is 1080p, and cuts a bit off the top and bottom, which is kind of what happened with CRTs anyway, so it always looked right this way to me. I'd make sure to try all the settings from 2x to 5x just to see what your TV is most compatible with and what it looks best in. There's also settings that allow you to decide what happens with 480i signals. I think it's best to just leave it as Bob D interlacing to 480p, but there's a few other options if you know what you're doing. The OSSC also has the ability to line double 480p signals, so if your display is compatible with 960p, this is a fun option for any 480p console. After resolution, the only other basic setting you should know about is scan lines, which can be activated directly from the remote or the menu. You could set this to your own preference, but there's settings for what type and how dark you'd like them. And that's pretty much it for basic use. If you'd like to tweak it at all though, the first thing I'd recommend is updating the firmware, as many features have been added over the years. Start by heading to the website that hosts the OSSC's firmware, which I have linked below, and download the correct file for you. Most OSSC's just use the one with audio, but if you have an older one with the DVI port and no audio support, you might need the no audio version. Then use the SD formatter tool to format a micro SD card. I suggest using one that's 2GB or smaller, just to ensure compatibility. Then run some kind of disk imaging software, such as Win32 Disk Imager. You have to run it in admin mode, and possibly other software as well, and also make sure your SD card is selected, and then load the bin file you just downloaded. With Win32 Disk Imager, you'll actually need to set the drop-down menu to all files in order to see the file at all. I know this flashing process might seem weird, but the OSSC can't just read files off of a card like a computer would. It needs to be imaged like this in order for the OSSC's operating system to understand it. Once it's done, just eject the microSD card and insert it into your OSSC. Now power on the OSSC, use the remote to enter the menu, and go to Settings, then Firmware Update. Then press 1 on the remote when prompted to start the process. After it's done, the LCD will prompt you to power cycle for the new firmware to launch. Now, if you don't plan on using custom profiles, you're pretty much done. As you can see here, there's nothing saved to each profile setting, and it's basically a factory fresh OSSC, just with the latest firmware. Taking the time to load custom profiles will definitely improve picture quality, but to be honest, I'm not sure everybody would agree that it's worth the effort to do so. So I suggest watching the rest of this video and seeing the differences between generic mode and custom profiles and see if you think that the difference is worth it to you. Or I guess maybe more relevant, if you think certain consoles or certain scenarios are worth going through the trouble, whereas others you might just want to leave in generic mode.
And to start this process, we're gonna start off at Firebrand X's website, where he took a lot of these optimal timings and combined them into one file that has all different profiles with all of these timings already customized and added to each one. These are finely tuned settings for each console that are the results of hours of work, but only take a moment to load. Just extract those to a folder on your desktop. Next, go to the OSSC Online Profile Editor, which is linked right on FBX's page. This will allow you to create a custom set of profiles based on the systems you use for each firmware revision. Since we just updated the firmware to version 086, I'll make sure that's what's selected from the dropdown. Then you can start creating your profiles. I always label the first one generic and just leave all the settings as is since they match the generic timings of a new OSSC. This way, if you have consoles without custom profiles, you could always just go back to these generic settings. Then click on the next profile number and start loading each of the profiles you'll be using. Just drag the corresponding file over and hit import JSON if you scroll up, you'll then see that the profile was added to the number that it was selected. You could then proceed to add up to 15 total, which is the memory limit of the OSSC. Just remember to click on the corresponding profile number before adding each one, otherwise you'll overwrite that previous profile position. Also, remember to delete the context of the JSON box before adding any more profiles. After you've loaded all you need, scroll down and hit Save All Profiles JSON. This will create a file that you could import back into this website as a backup of all the work you just did. That means if you ever want to swap out just one profile, you won't have to go through all this again. Just load that one JSON file, then overwrite any single profile setting you might have. Lastly, hit Save All Profiles Bin. This will create a file that you need to flash to the micro SD card exactly like you just did with the firmware file. Once again, the OSSC can't just read files like a computer, so anytime you need to interface with it, you have to create an image file like we showed before and are showing now. After you're done, insert the micro SD into the OSSC and power it on. As you can see here, as we enter the settings menu, there's still no profiles imported. Now just go to Import Settings under the same submenu and press 1 to import the profiles you just created in the bin file. Remember to keep both the bin and JSON file to make this easier in the future. Finally, we have the last and potentially most annoying step of the configuration, setting phase. I'll start by showing an easy example using the Super Nintendo in the 240p test suite. Just load the software and select the checkerboard pattern. Then go into the OSSC settings and load the corresponding profile. Most SNES games and the 240p test suite are 256 resolution, so we'll choose that. Next, go into the sampling options menu of the OSSC, hit up and select advanced timings. Then hit up again and use the left or right arrow to start setting sampling phase. You'll need to be patient as your TV or capture card might temporarily lose signal as we're seeing here. The goal is to adjust phase until all of the interference on the screen is gone. Unfortunately, internet compression ruins things like checkerboard patterns, so even though in person I'm seeing a clear setting slowly get dialed in, you might still see interference in this video all the way through the checkerboard patterns. After setting phase, make sure to go back into the settings menu and overwrite the save on the profile you're tweaking. As long as you save it, you'll never need to deal with this again, even if you change output resolutions or add scan lines. Unless something in your setup changes, like a new cable or a different Super Nintendo console, you can just select this profile when using a SNES 256 game, and it'll always be dialed in. So let's check out examples of the different video modes I just showed. I'll start with showing just the generic profile, and as you can see, it looks absolutely awesome just as it is. That's why leaving the OSSC alone and not loading custom profiles is good enough for most people. Once we load the optimal profile, two things happen. First, the image becomes extremely sharp and everything's lined up perfectly. Check out Link's shield as an example of this. 
Unfortunately, the aspect ratio also changes and the OSSC can't really do anything about this. If you're capturing video, this isn't a big deal at all since you could just change the footage in post-processing and it'll look absolutely perfect with no shimmering. If you're just using the OSSC for gaming and not really to capture video, having an aspect ratio that's off could be really annoying depending on the game. You can try setting the aspect ratio to generic 4x3, but you'll probably end up with a look that's pretty much just like setting it to the generic profile, which kind of makes this whole thing not really worth the trouble. And to be honest, if there's a console that doesn't have a version of the 240p test suite for it, it might be way too much trouble to try to dial in phase. So here's an example of a situation that for most people would definitely be too much trouble to go through. I have a PlayStation 1 game that I want to use with optimal timings, and first I need to check to see if anyone knows what resolution the game runs in, since the PS1 has about five different resolutions it could use. Then we need to find a game in that same resolution that has some sort of pattern on it in order to be able to set phase. Firebrand X suggested Street Fighter, since when the life bars are drained, they show a checkerboard pattern. Then I need to try to set the phase as best I can based on the look of the pattern, as well as the sharpness on both sides of it. What a giant pain, right? Once again, if you're capturing footage for something like a documentary or a comparison video, I think this, as well as correcting the aspect ratio later, is really worth it. I've seen so many videos comparing two versions of a game that are using bad captures to demonstrate the differences between the two versions, and often the things the reviewers point out are results of the capture, not the game. If your goal is just a game on a flat panel though, I think whether optimal timings are worth it really depends on the console and what tools you have access to. So for example, if you want to play Neo Geo and you already own a ROM cart, you could load up a different kind of test suite that also has a checkerboard pattern and set the phase pretty easily. And just coincidentally, the Neo Geo's aspect ratio ends up lining up pretty much perfectly with the OSSC's optimal timings, so you don't have to worry about it being off. Also, Sega Genesis 320 resolution games are probably a good choice as well, because while the aspect ratio is wider than you'd find on a CRT, a lot of people really prefer the look of the square pixels with Genesis games. Honestly though, as long as you have one profile saved as generic, it's worth it to mess around with this stuff, and if you decide it's not for you, just go back to the generic slot and use it like many other people do, and as we've seen before, it'll still look great. Now, there's a lot more that you could do with the open source scan converter, but I really wanted this video to concentrate first on the basics and then just the next step past that, how to dial in profiles and set phase. If you'd like a lot more info on this, check out Firebrand X's website, as well as the wiki, which has every bit of information you could possibly imagine on the OSSC. Now also, the successor, the OSSC Pro was announced and is due to release within about a year, so I'm hoping that that follow-up product might be able to address some of these issues. It would be absolutely amazing if the Pro would be able to automatically detect the signal coming in, so you would never have to bother knowing the resolution of the game, and automatically oversample that to the target resolution so that you would never even have to worry about phase. Now, I'm not even sure if either of those are possible, but if they are, I'd absolutely love to see them, because you could essentially then have a generic mode that looks identical to dialed-in profiles in the current OSSC. So, fingers crossed for that, and of course, as soon as that product's release or I get a beta version of it, I'm definitely going to do a review and compare and contrast the two. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked this video, please consider signing up for one of my support services, as your help is what's keeping these videos, as well as all of the research I'm involved in, alive. Also, please check out the weekly podcast that keeps everyone in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene. It's available every Wednesday as a video, and everywhere audio podcasts can be found. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.